Hello, everybody. I extend my warm welcome to this webinar to all of you. We'll provide introduction to, to UDP, glucuronosyl transferases, examples of reaction catalyzed by UGTs. We'll go specifically over cases of gemfibrozil and irinotecan. And with these cases, we point out highlights of important properties of the UGT enzymes and their products. Magnitude of uh, UGT contribution to drug metabolism is illustrated by these two pie charts of phase two enzymes. Graphed are percentages of drugs with major UGT metabolites in 200 most prescribed drugs on the left and on the right in the drugs approved by FDA between 2005 and 16. UGTs were responsible for phase two metabolism of 38 to 45 percent of medicines included in this analysis. Taking into account phase one metabolism, the overall contribution of UGTs was about 11 percent. UGTs, of course, make additional contributions to drug metabolism by forming secondary metabolites. They do not necessarily rise to the level of major metabolites. UDP glucuronosyl transferase superfamily is phylogenetically divided into families 1A, 8A, 2A, 2B, and 3A. Genes for drug metabolizing enzymes are in the families 1A and 2B. Major drug metabolizing enzymes are marked in yellow on the phylogenetic tree on the left. 1A, 2B, and 2A family enzymes mainly utilize UDPGA as a cofactor. Therefore, it's their name. Hepatic enzymes involved in drug metabolism are these 10 major uh, UGTs listed here and in color. Intestinal enzymes are UGT 1A1, A3, A6, 2B7, and B17. UGTs 1A7, 8A, and A10 are also expressed in gastrointestinal tract, but their contribution to drug metabolism is largely unknown. Renal enzymes are 1A9, 2B7, and to lower extent, 1A6. Individually, 1A1, A3, A4, A9, and 2B7 all present in hepatocytes contribute most to drug metabolism between 15 and 20 percent per each of them. Brief uh, characteristic of UGT mediated metabolism. UGTs are mainly located in endoplasmic reticulum of liver, kidney, gastrointestinal tract, lung, prostate, mammary gland, skin, brain, spleen, and nasal mucosa. In addition to multiple xenobiotics, endobiotics metabolized by UGTs include bilirubin, steroid hormones, and thyroid hormones. Dependence of uridine 5 diphospho alpha diglucuronic acid, which is formed by UDP glucose dehydrogenase, is a highlight of the enzyme. Alternative cofactors include UDP glucose, xylose, or galactose. Generally, site of glucuronidation is an electro-rich or nucleophilic oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur heteroatoms. Examples of all glucuronides formed by UGT 1A enzymes are 17 beta estradiol and trihydroxyvitamin D3. Please note that in cases that a given molecule is metabolized in more than one position, term bisglucuronide is used. And in case of 7-estradiol, uh, multiple UGTs can participate in metabolism of that molecule. All glucuronides formed by UGT 2B enzymes are, for example, morphine and s -oxazepam. Two glucuronides of morphine can be formed. On the left-hand side of the molecule, here at the uh, alcoholic hydroxyl group, 6-hydroxyglucuronide can be formed. This glucuronide is a powerful analgesic. 
The reaction is catalyzed by UG2B7 in the brain. It is only catalyzed by UG2B7. On the right-hand side of the molecule, uh, there is a location for formation O3 glucuronide. From the perspective of analgesia, it is a deactivating reaction since O3 glucuronide is not an analgesic. This reaction is catalyzed by multiple UGT1 and enzymes, and also to some extent by 2B7 expressed in liver and other organs. Oxazepam is glucuronidated by UGT2B15, which preferentially glucuronidates S oxazepam over its R enantiomer. Also, it's noted that about 10% of the population appear to be poor glucuronidators of S oxazepam, and one study has implicated the low activity of UGT2B15 star 2 allele as a possible determinant of such variation. Acyl glucuronides are metabolites of special concern due to their reactivity and identification of several acid glucuronides as CYP2C8 inhibitors. Tolmentin is an example of molecule which acid glucuronide is highly reactive. Please note that uh, acetic acid uh, portion of this molecule has unsubstituted uh, carbon number two. When half-life of this molecule was determined in vitro, it was only about 16 minutes. We'll come back to these observations later in the course of uh, discussion of properties of acyl glucuronides. Primary and secondary aromatic and aliphatic amines are also subject of N-glucuronidation, as indicated on this slide. Similarly, three sulfhydryl groups can be substrate for formation of S-glucuronides. Certain xenobiotics contain carbon atom that is sufficiently nucleophilic to form C-glucuronides, as exemplified here by phenylbutazone that is a substrate of UGT1A9. Less common reactions catalyzed by UGTs include formation of n carbamyl glucuronides where carbonate is incorporated into the, into the molecule. Other less common reactions are diglucuronides when two glucuronide or two glucuronic acids are attached in tandem to a single side of the substrate. Uh, third, uh, less common reactions involve cofactors uh, containing glucose, xylose, and uh, galactose, as we indicated earlier. Acyl glucuronides can be reactive metabolites. Although the UGTs are known as a detoxifying enzymes that increase water solubility of xenobiotics and facilitate their elimination, some of glucuronides cause toxicity. Acyl glucuronides are metabolites of concern in this regard. They are two mechanisms that lead to formation of covalent adducts of glucuronide, or more specifically, their xenobiotic portion, also known as a glycan, binding to the proteins. First of the two mechanisms leading to formation of covalently bound adducts is illustrated on this slide. Structure on the left here represents acyl glucuronide, although acyl is not its original position at carbon one, but in this case, it at position at carbon three. This is an illustration of phenomenon of acyl migration. Acyl migration predisposes this structure to transient ring opening. Transient ring opening is followed by formation of the bond between uh, carbon number one, and in this case, amino group of a, of a lysine. This is a structure responsible for adduct of a glucuronide to cellular proteins. The covalently bound moieties are implicated in toxic slash immunohepatitis, as well as idiosyncratic drug-induced liver injury. In the second mechanism, 
leading to covalent modification of cellular protein, the acyl glucuronide undergoes nucleophilic displacement at this uh, bond between oxygen and carbon, with glucuronic acid being a, a leaving group. And the product of this reaction is the acylated protein. As in the previous example, the covalently bound moieties are implicated in toxicity and idiosyncratic drug-induced liver injury. For your reference, I would like to mention most that most recent advances in methods and strategies for evaluating toxic potential of acyl glucuronides were summarized at uh, ISSX 24th North American meeting uh, in September of this year. At that meeting, uh, Dr. Tom Bailey delivered a presentation that is a uh, reference for you on this slide. Safety evaluation of acyl glucuronides could be a significant portion of their risking strategy for new molecular entities. The guidance, in this case, this is a safety testing of drug metabolites or a missed guidance, recognized that reactive metabolites can be difficult to detect and measure because of their short half-life. The guidance suggests that in some cases, however, they can form stable products, such as glutathione conjugates, that can be measured. Further guidance says, however, if the conjugate forms a potentially toxic compound, such as acyl glucuronide, additional safety assessment may be needed. The additional studies may include characterization of acyl glucuronide stability and reactivity in vitro. Hazard mitigation can be approached with a question-based uh, scheme. Do metabolites formed indicate activation by coenzyme A or oxidative pathways? Is acid glucuronide formation a major or a minor pathway? Is acyl glucuronide detectable in circulation in human and tox species? Does acyl glucuronide show acyl migration in vitro and in vivo? And perhaps finally, what is the in vitro reactivity of acyl glucuronide? Determination of in vitro acyl glucuronide stability is simple and informative assay for evaluation of toxic potential of drug candidates. The stability of acyl glucuronide is assessed in a phosphate buffer. The half-life of the parent acyl glucuronide is determined. If the half-life is less than half an hour, the acyl glucuronide is likely to cause liver toxicity or possibly other adverse effects. On the right-hand side of this slide, we have a list of acid-containing drugs with their corresponding half-lives of acid glucuronide metabolites. Please note that uh, tolmentin is uh, at the top of the list and their half-life of its uh, acyl glucuronide indicates that it's a highly reactive molecule. Also, please note that out of five of uh, drugs listed there on the top with the shortest half-lives, four of them have been withdrawn from the market due to their liver toxicity. Structural alerts for the bioactivation to reactive metabolites that cause toxicity and or SIP inhibition are acetic acid and propionic acid. Two non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs with very similar structures are shown below. They are ibuprofen and ibuprofenac. Both drugs produced an acyl glucuronide, but the ibuprofenac glucuronide was much more reactive to the small change in chemical structure. And the small change in the chemical structure is lack of substitution of the second carbon in acetic acid portion of ibuprofenac. Ibuprofenac was withdrawn from the market in 68 due to hepatotoxicity. Ibuprofen has been marketed in the US since 74 and is still a widely used and safe drug. As we indicated earlier, CYP2C8 inhibition by acyl glucuronide is of concern. 
Several acyl glucuronides have been identified as irreversible or metabolism-dependent CYP2C8 inhibitors and substrate. To put it into a perspective, we know that multiple successful acid-containing drugs, some of them are listed in the bottom row of the table, are also metabolized to acyl glucuronides. Many of these glucuronides are able to reversibly inhibit CYP2C8. But they are also acyl glucuronides capable of irreversible inhibition of CYP2C8. The three examples are gemfibrozil, clopidogrel, and diliobuvir. Clopidogrel is an ester that is hydrolyzed by carboxylic esterase 1 before it can be substrate for UGTs. UGTs responsible for formation of acyl glucuronides of these drugs are UGTs 2Bs. Metabolism dependent inhibition of CYP2C8 contributes to several drug drug interactions. Genfibrozil acyl glucuronide is metabolism dependent inhibitor of CYP2C8. Early work identifying genfibrozil acyl glucuronide as CYP2C8 metabolism dependent inhibitor was conducted at Xenotech. Panel on the left illustrates that 30 minutes per incubation of human liver microsomes did not result in a change of IC50 of CYP2C8 substrate as compared with the reaction without pre-incubation. As you see, these two lines are practically superimposed and uh, Corresponding IC50 values were 120 and 150 micromoral without and with pre-incubation. When the same human liver microsomes were incubated with gemfibrozil glucuronide, the pre-incubation resulted in reduction of IC50 from 24 to 1.8 millimolar. The condition with uh, zero pre-incubation had an uh, IC50 of about uh, 24 micromolar. With pre-incubation, reduction was observed about 13 folds to 1.8 micromolar only. This provided an evidence that gemfibrozil glucuronide, but not the parent molecule, is metabolism-dependent inhibitor of CYP2C8. Fatal interaction of gemfibrozil occurred with cerevastatin, which is CYP2C8 substrate. Cerevastatin, but not gemfibrozil, was withdrawn from the market in 2001. In answering the question, is the investigational drug a substrate of metabolizing enzymes? Guidance suggests first evaluating uh, major SIPs, then minor SIPs, and then other oxidative enzymes. If there is no satisfactory answer obtained in these three steps, phase two enzymes, including UDP gluconolysal transferases and sulfonotransferases are to be considered. In July of this year, the FDA position on the UGTs in drug interaction studies was presented at ISSX short course, which is referenced on this slide for your convenience. In the current guidance, there is a little mentioning of UGTs, but general consideration for evaluation of drug candidates UGT victim and perpetrator potential can be analyzed from these questions. Are the UGTs main metabolic pathways? Are one or more UGTs involved? Are these involved enzymes polymorphically expressed? What is likelihood of co-administration with other UGT inhibitors? Are glucuronide conjugates pharmacologically active? Are glucuronide conjugates chemically reactive? UGT reaction phenotyping can be conducted in a process similar to the approach adopted for the SIP enzymes. It is recommended that data from multiple approaches are taken into consideration together since uh, each of them have their strong and weak points.
after it is determined that UGTs metabolize the drug, initial qualitative screen in the recombinant enzymes is recommended. There is uh, 10 or at least 10 recombinant human UGTs commercially available. Conformation of results obtained in the first step can be obtained with specific chemical inhibitors and estimation of fraction metabolized in vitro. These results can be further corroborated, for example, with correlation method using a panel of individual human liver microsomes pre-characterized for specific activities of different UGT enzymes. If any of uh, UGTs identified in these steps are polymorphically expressed, variants with lo low or no activity can be further examined. And I also say that uh, some of the variants with alleles representing low or no activity are available as recombinant enzymes for this type of studies. Further on reaction phenotyping. Several years ago, Xenotech conducted an evaluation of chemical inhibitors of nine UGTs from families 1A and 2B. Up to 11 inhibitors were examined with each enzyme. And this evaluation was based on application of the enzyme-specific substrate. Poster presenting this work in detail is available as scientific resource on our webpage for you. So as I indicated, uh, 11 inhibitors and 9 UGTs were evaluated. Selective UGT inhibitors were identified. Erlotrinib was identified as UGT1A1 inhibitor, hecogenin for 1A4, nifomic acid for 1A9, and desloratidine for 2B10. This study also examined free concentration of each inhibitor at three time points. We identified desloratidine as specific inhibitor of UGT to be 10, as indicated on this panel of data with a specific UG to be 10 substrate. Comparison of this panel with other panels that are presented uh, in our poster allows us to conclude specificity of desloratidine for 2B10 since uh, the compound did not inhibit other enzymes evaluated in the study. Nevertheless, in that study, we did not find a specific inhibitor, for example, for UGT to B15. For your reference, examples of UGT selective inhibitors are presented in this table. The table confirms desloratidine for UGT to be 10 inhibition, but does not provide an inhibition for UGT to be 15. Please note that uh, this table really contains only uh, in selective inhibitors for five UGTs, and we know that at least uh, 10 of them are available as uh, commercially available uh, recombinant enzymes. Also for your reference, some UGT enzyme selective substrates are presented in this table. This summary of hepatic UGT selective substrate reflects our, our laboratory practice, which is in a middle column, as well as data from other sources. Please note that this table doesn't include intestinal 1A, 7, 8, or 9 enzymes. UGT1A10 is found in human intestinal microsomes. Dopamine is considered its selective substrate. Recently, additional search for UGT1A10 selective substrates was conducted. This uh, search was based on a comparative analysis of uh, binding site of UGT1A1 versus UGT1A10. Fluorescent derivatives of 7-hydroxycumarin, substrate for 1A1, were developed based on modeling of a glycan binding site of the UGT1A10 and comparison of this site with the UGT1A1. Based on this comparison or analysis, 7-hydroxycumarin, which we see here, 
was substituted at carbon free with bulky groups like this one here providing for a good fit for the size of the binding site in the UGT1810. Compound number four of this series, which is this compound, which is a four dimethyl amino channel, demonstrated good specificity in the panel of recombinant enzymes. This is the formation of glucuronide in uh, recombinant 1A10. They are minor contributors to this process. A7, A9, and uh, B15. Please note that UGTs showing minimal formation of glucuronide, namely A7, 9, and uh, B15, are not expressed in the intestine where 1A10 is expressed. UGT enzymes are inducible. All nuclear receptors mediating UGT induction also regulate SIP genes, but the magnitude of induction of the UGTs is lower than SIPs, most of the time reaching only up to three to five fold. This table lists uh, participating nuclear receptors, their corresponding response elements, activators, and regulated UGTs. Glucuronide conjugates that are formed in hepatocytes are excreted into bile by multidrug resistant protein 2 and uh, breast cancer resistant protein. Those that are destined for excretion in the urine are transported out through sinusoidal, sinusoidal membrane by MRP3 and MRP4. Uptake of glucuronides into hepatocytes is mediated by OATP1A1 and OATP1B3. The uptake into renal proximal tubular cells is mediated by OAT3. Glucuronides that are formed in the enterocytes can be secreted back into the lumen of the intestine by MRP4, similarly to the river, to the liver, and MRP1. In vitro hepatic clearance due to the UGTs is often estimated based on kinetic parameters Km and Vmax. Determine in vitro with human hepatocytes, liver microsomes, or S9 fractions. Results of these estimations underpredict UGT mediated clearance observed in vivo. Variations of assay conditions employed to address or bridge, bridge this gap are listed here. For example, Different reaction buffer, trace HCl versus phosphate, can be examined. Not much difference there. Cofactor concentration, saturating concentration is recommended. Addition of saccharolactone, an inhibitor of beta glucuronidases, can be considered if there is a sufficient evidence of uh, presence of beta glucuronidase in the reaction. Addition of uh, magnesium chloride to sequester UDP formed as a deglucuronidation reaction coproduct that is a competitive inhibitor for binding of UDPGA. Instability of acid glucuronides needs to be considered in a given pH of the buffer. Addition of uh, protein to the reaction mixture to bind long chain fatty acid that inhibit UGT has been evaluated. Also, use of membrane disruptive agents such as alamethacin or detergent chops were used. Alamethacin is a polypeptide of about uh, 20 amino acids. It's an antibiotic of a fungal origin. Xenotech conducted evaluation of the effects of alamethacin on KM of the substrate reaction and IC50 of several inhibitors of UGT1A1 and UGT to be seven. Alamethacin did not have an effect on the KM of metabolism of specific substrates of 1A1 and 2B7 in human liver microsomes or recombinant UGTs. If you look at the values of KM without alamethacin and with alamethacin for estradiol in human liver microsomes, there is a small difference, but it's not a huge difference. And these values in the 
recombinant enzymes are essentially the same. Similar observations can be made for morphine, uh, specific subsidies for huge GT2B7. Small differences here and small differences here. The poster, this poster here, is available on our website as a scientific uh, resource for you for further examination of this, of this issue. In the same study, we evaluated effects of uh, alametacin on IC50 of UGT1A1 inhibitors. The poor forming molecule of alametacin did not have effects on IC50 of uh, bilirubin, cyclosporin, ethylene estradiol, erlotinib, and or itraconazole. If you scroll down through these columns from human liver microsomes without alametacin and with, these numbers are essentially identical. The same goes for uh, recombinant enzymes. Proposed mechanism of action for uh, alametacin is formation of pores in the microsomal membrane, then can facilitate access of the substrate and the cofactor to the responsive binding site. In uh, 2012, addition of alametacin to UGT reaction was proposed as a universal activating step. And some data was presented suggesting that there is a increase in enzyme activity with alametacin, although it could be uh, substrate specific and also dependent on a microsomal protein concentration in the reaction. It is possible that uh, vesicles form from the fragmented endoplasmic reticulum in the process of uh, preparation of microsomes are present in both orientation in respect to the UGT binding site facing uh, the lumen of the vesicle or the medium, in which case uh, formation of these additional path for uh, substrate of the enzyme will not uh, be of uh, significant effect. Also, some fragments of uh, endoplasmic reticulum may not form vesicles. Additionally, as indicated uh, also in this diagram, the UGT substrates, which are a small lipophilic molecule, may need to access their binding site on the enzyme through the membrane by crossing the membrane itself. And as I indicated, this is consistent with their lipophilic nature. These observations taken together indicate that effects of uh, alametacin may be substrate specific, not necessarily universal for all UGTs and all substrates. Knowledge of UGT ontology contributes to evaluation of safety of UGT substrates in different age groups. Proteonomic study from Children's Mercy Hospital here in Kansas City presented the pie charts of age-dependent changes in human liver UGT compositions. This is a graph of abundance of protein in neonates and adults. In neonates, here, UGT2B15 is a dominant protein, but its abundance diminishes, diminishes with age. In infants, uh, not uh, presented as a pie chart on this graph, and in adults, UGT2B7 dominates, which is a big slice of the pie here. From birth to adulthood, UGT1A4, A6, and A9 increase. They are presented as uh, uh, small uh, slivers of the pie at birth or in neonates, which is defined as uh, up to 28 days of life, but they increase at uh, adults. This table summarizes observations made from the pie charts on the proteinomic study presented on a previous slide. On the left, in brown, we have a UGT composition of the adult liver based on the six enzymes that were evaluated in the proteinomic study. And they are listed from the high to low abundance, top to the bottom. Level of protein expression in the neonates and in infants is expressed as a percent of adult population. UGTs 1A4, A9, and A6 grow most their abundance from 
infant to adult. For example, UGT1A4 starts from only about 1.8% of its adult level. These changes are enzyme specific. Parameter H50 presented, presented here informs us about the age when protein abundance reaches level of 50% of the adult and it varies with the different enzymes. In blue are results of a study using a different approach to evaluate ontogeny of UGTs. These studies evaluated enzyme activity in human liver microsomes from donors of different age. For UGTs 1A3, 2B4, and 2B10, limited age-related changes were observed. For 2B17, maturation of the enzyme activity level was characterized by age 50 parameter of 17.4 years. This is a UGT participating in metabolism of testosterone. Other age 50 parameters obtained in the enzyme activity study are presented in blue for comparison with proteinomic studies. Certain uh, differences between these two estimates are uh, clearly visible. It must be said that uh, uh, these studies different in a number of uh, samples analyzed, and they also different in a, particularly in the number of samples in the lowest age groups. These groups tend to have very high inter-individual variability that may have contributed to the differences between estimates obtained in these two studies. From our own experience, I can add that livers from neonates and infants are often presenting with uh, multiple uh, pathological processes and uh, multiple uh, drugs being administered to uh, these individuals. These are not, as you would say, uh, clean, unexpected uh, accidents. Case of irinotecan. Irinotecan is an anti agent. It is a ester that is activated to active or toxic metabolite known as SN38 by carboxylic esterases, as well as is inactivated by CYP3A4. Glucuronide SN38G is produced by UGT1A1 and UGT1A9, and it's inactive or non-toxic metabolite. Therefore, it is understood that UGT1A1 start 28, start 28 allele homozygo patients are at higher risk for side effects of this drug, simply because they have a limited ability to detoxify SN38. The intestinal bacterial beta-glucuronidases deconjugate SN glucuronide back to its toxic form, resulting in enterohepatic recirculation of the toxic moiety and gastrointestinal side effects of the drugs. All glucuronides in general are hydrolyzed faster than N-glucuronides. There is also an indication of formation of SN38 from the parent compound in the intestine in the erythrocytes. Inactivation of SN38 in gastrointestinal tract is mediated by UGT1A1, same as in the liver, and UGT1A110, the uh, intestine-specific enzyme. Sasituzumab govitecan is an antibody drug conjugate of SN38 that has been approved for two forms of metastatic cancer with a warning. The label contains warning for increased risk for neutropenia fibral neutropenia and anemia in, in UGT1A1 star 20 a allele homozyga patients. For some of you interested in uh, studying uh, genetic effects of uh, specific alleles in uh, UGT1A1 or UGT1A9 polymorphically expressed enzymes, we have uh, individual human liver microsomes that were genotyped and we uh, offer them as uh, wild-type homozygous 
heterozygo or homozygo for alleles associated with uh, no activity, star 28, or star 3 in UGT 189. This essentially completes my uh, scientific contents of uh, presentation. But I would like to conclude my presentation on a, on a positive note in slightly different area, aiming at the uh, closing deep differences between certain groups of citizens uh, in our country at this time. We all seem to underappreciate diversity and adhere tightly to our own uh, preferences and perceptions. Therefore, to all of us, I would uh, offer the following uh, observations. Dogs are good glucuronidators, but cats are better acetylators than dogs. Additionally, you can support one of each. I also would like to acknowledge all scientists whose data was referenced on the slides and used in this presentation. I am also very happy to acknowledge past and present xenotech scientists who contributed to this field. 